Hi, this is Ted. I wanted to visit with you today about how to dramatically increase your sales. Now this will take us about 14, maybe 15 minutes. I'm not sure after we're done if we'll ever need to visit again. But should you want to reach me, my phone number is on the bottom of each of these pages. So let's get started. Rule number one, good marketing outperforms great salesmanship every time and by a wide margin. Fractal marketing for salespeople. I know that's kind of strange. It's not something I would ordinarily think of or any of us in sales would think of, but it's absolutely critical that we understand it. I'll go over why. Finding and understanding the actual patterns in sales will make you successful without the heavy lifting. Uh, if you understand fractals, uh, then you'll understand that the best salespeople make the fewest calls as a rule, not as an exception. You'll also understand if you've ever been introduced to multi-level marketing that that's why that they make sure that you have two downlines. By having two downlines, you're already violating the rules of nature. So you could sell a lot of stuff for them and not make any money, and that's the whole idea. That's what fractals are all about. But we need to understand them in a lot of ways. Okay. Pareto was the first guy that introduced the main concept as it relates to sales. In 1905, this gentleman uh, from uh, uh, Italy observed that 80% of Italy's land was owned by 20% of the people. At the same time, he observed that 20% of the pea pods in his garden had 80% of the peas. But let's take a look at that Pareto principle. We've heard that, the 80-20 theory of sales. 20% of the salesmen bring in 80% of the sales and 20% of the clients bring in 80% of the business. But what if it's a fractal? And it, believe me, it is. It, it, by saying it's a fractal, I'm saying that it repeats itself within itself, like this. 20% times 20% times 20%, if you're talking uh, you know, just about going three levels deep, 20% of the salesmen times 20 times 20, then less than 1% of your salespeople multiply that three levels deep, 80% times 80% times 80% will bring in over half of the business. That's absolutely amazing. A lot of people might argue with that. But let's take a major company, someone like Procter & Gamble. They're one of the biggest. I think you'll agree. Very few people understand that uh, Procter & Gamble, 25% of the business that they do comes from or is related to one single client, and that is, of course, Walmart. So let's look at what this means to us. We can get in that 1% where all the money is made if we can paint ourselves into the fractal that is sales. And the way to do that is by reaching critical mass. The way to reach critical mass is by getting those certain things that the 1% that are successful and and duplicating what they're doing that works. It starts by just following the leader. All right, let's look at these numbers right here. 1,000 cold calls. You can get the same result by having 100 referrals. And 100 referrals, you can get the same result of 100 referrals by having as few as 10 introductions. That's a part of, of making sense out of doing less, less is more kind of concept. Let's look for a second about how we do get these referrals. Well, the concept that works is to ask briefly but repeatedly. What we mean by that is you don't spend a lot of time talking with people about giving you some referrals or about anything else because you'll use up your welcome and you won't be able to call them back. The secret to getting referrals is to be able to get permission to call back again and see if they can remember any. Because the first time they're going to say, gee, I can't think of anyone, I'll let you know. Well, okay, yeah, well, is it okay if I call back the same time next week? I promise to be brief. That's how you get them. Here's how you keep them and turn them into introductions. Type the phone number into your phone as they give it to you. They, they'll think you're just putting it in your database. Push dial and then hand the phone over, asking, would you mind introducing me? That converts your referral to an introduction right there. 
main thing that you have to remember as you're getting appointments with key people is that you have to look like a player. Let's look at this little two-year-old girl here. Hey, she's got the glove on right. She's got a firm grip on the ball. She's towing the rubber just like the big kids do. She looks like she knows what she's doing. Well, if a little two-year-old girl can look like she knows what she's doing, why can't we act like a player? You just want the audition. Don't yak, yak, yak with people. You just want to reach Zeus, Thor, or Odin, the key person, and get that appointment. All right. More calls does not equal more dollars. Calls times the value of the prospect times the quality of your presentation. That's the full formula right there. So remember that. All right. Be a player. If you follow those first two rules that we just spoke of, you will get, if you understand the rule of seven touches, you'll get at least seven tries to reach these people and get them to agree to give you an audience. I'm talking about you know, getting through to the king, to the emperor, to the pharaoh, to the person that you want to reach, the bopper, the main dude, the person that does the buying. That's who we want to reach. You can keep after them. You can't just call them seven times. You've got to mix up your program. You call them. You email them. You text message them. It's kind of like uh, you've got them surrounded. All right. You want to get more at bats, but you want to get key at bats where you can where you get with the right people. Uh, so don't forget the rule of seven touches. The more you understand it, take advantage of it, the better you're going to do. All right. People do business with people. It just blows me away how few salespeople understand how important it is to become a peep person. You see this when they send you communications and there's no picture of who you're talking to. That doesn't make a lick of sense to me. On the left here is a digital business card that I use with one of my businesses that I send out at the bottom of every piece of, of email that I send out. My picture is right there. If you get a call from me or if you call me, you're going to see my picture right there just like this guy has his picture there. Why wouldn't you want to do that? All right. Pay close attention to these numbers because they're absolutely critical. This guy here, Tor Nortrunders, he's a scientist. He already did the math. Co wrote a book called The User Illusion cutting consciousness down to size. He came to the realization sometimes we just don't pay attention when people are talking. But if you do, suppose you're paying attention to me and I'm just talking, and you give me a score of 30, if I used visual aids in my presentation, I would be 33% more successful, more effective. That's helpful. Might just as well do it. But here's the real secret. Even if you gave me a score of 100 for hearing me when you weren't listening, you'd get a score of 10,000 for using a visual presentation, meaning that people are 100 times more likely to remember what they see than what you say. That's critical. All right. Make your presentations beautiful. Make them look good. Uh, because the pretty girl will always be asked to dance. This young lady right here, very attractive, very vivacious, her team won the Olympic gold last summer in gymnastics. She was the prettiest, although they were all very pretty, and most vivacious of all those young girls, and they chose her to be their uh, spokesperson to put her face on the Kellogg's Corn Flakes box before she even won an individual gold. Pretty amazing. All right. But guys, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, look beautiful. You can be uglier than a mud fence. <laughs> you know, th this guy right here, John Wayne, he was no pretty boy. He was no Clark Gable. He was no Cary Grant. But he was memorable. He had a way of saying things. He had a way of doing things. And he even had a walk that took him years to perfect that nobody who sees it forgets. All right. Hey, even a yucky salad can be made to look like fun. So make them want it. Uh, duplicate and repeat to win. What I mean by that is you need to learn how to standardize your communication. And less is more. I have a simple text message that I send out that has been extremely effective. And I use it in all kinds of cases, and you could too. Here it is. Could we visit by phone? phone today, question mark, you would be 
amazed at the number of people and the quality of the people that call me back or send me a text message and says, yeah, give me a call at 2 o'clock or, hey, I'll give you a call at 3 o'clock or uh, I'm open right now. Can you come over? That kind of thing. Try it. You'll like it. This is a communication I standardized in one of my businesses where I send this out after I have a meeting with people about a certain subject. And it's all standardized. They look at it. They can see I know what I want to talk about when I'm there and that I appreciate their time and I'm not going to ramble on about something ridiculous. So do the same. It will help you a great deal. All right. Branding rules apply. Please recognize that. Both your company and you are a brand. How memorable is your brand? I'm not talking about your company's brand. I'm talking about you. Are you branding you? Let's look at a friend of mine here. His name is David Montalongo. You may have seen him on TV. He did that show from San Antonio with his brother where they were it was flipped this house. He's a coach in real estate investing. That's him right there. That's his picture. That's his family crest right there. There's his logo right there. That's what he puts out in his communication because he wants you to remember who he is. He's got tons of companies selling his stuff for him, but he wants you to remember who he is. Duh. Why not go and do likewise? I promised you that at the end of this, um, I wasn't sure it would be a fit for you, if there would be any reason to ever talk with me again. But for a few of you, maybe there could be a reason. And that is this. I'm looking to get a few people together that will work with me on some meetings on that uh, Hangout thing on, on Google where we talk about how to use the various Internet marketing tools that we got today to help us as salespeople to increase the effectiveness of what we're doing. So I'm looking for people that have had experience with and skills with uh, you know, the various programs on there, Google+, Plus. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, any 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 of the stuff that's out there. So if you think that could be a fit, give me a call. Otherwise, God bless. It's been great.